Brilliant. Um, and I would like to offer a very warm welcome to Andrew, who is one of one of the many people um, who have very kindly given up time to, to, to do a to talk to hiring manager um, talk. Um, I had the pleasure of working with Andrew on a very neat app, and I have to say it's beautiful, <laughs> um, which hopefully will go from strength to strength. Um, and the Nagma team are great fun um, and of a wealth of experience. Um, so in the series, there's, you know, obviously we've been trying to cover different sectors and different types of company. Um, so I'll let sort of Andrew introduce himself, talk a little bit about Nagna, what they do, and um, yeah, the kind of world of a startup and how to get in. <laughs> um, so over to you, Andrew. Hello, everybody. So, yeah, so my name is Andrew Garden. I'm one of the co-founders of Nogna Studio, which, uh, which is an app agency for startups. So we're about two and a half years old. Um, but I think when we first started, I was working um, at a fintech startup. And um, on the side, um, I was exploring. I always had plans to you know, jump into the startup world after I've got an experience. I felt like I was ready. So um, me and my future co-founder, Andreas, um, we got an intro through Codebase. So Codebase is the great place to be because um, you don't know what you're looking for, but if you have a, if you chat to someone and you're talking about what you're thinking, what ideas you want, you know, that person can pass you on to someone else. That person suggests you speak to this person. And then that's kind of what happened um, with me. Um, I helped uh, an early, early stage startup back in the day. Um, I got an intro to, um, to Andreas. Um, so we started working on this kind of app idea, which was basically um, um, the word would be like an organizing kind of app. So what we kind of found was that um, we were moving into a world of micro networks, micro social networks. So you've got WhatsApp groups, um, but the lifespan of these are quite long. Like I've got some that are almost six, seven years old. Um, and you do all your planning in there. And what we found was that you get different types of users on them. So you have the ghosts, so the people that will read the messages, but they will not respond. So they'll always say red. You have the organizer, which is usually the, the leader of the group. So the one that kind of plans um, the outings and, and whatnot. Um, you then have the, the cheerleaders. So the people that will, um, you know, contribute to the, to the group. And what they'll do is they'll just um, throw in some memes lots of um, gifts of cats, um, just funny things. And what we found was um, it really needed structure in it. So what we wanted to do was kind of build out a, basically a mobile app that lets you chat with your group um, and also plan events and then basically do an event and then capture all the, basically the, the content or the, the residue from a, from a heavy night out. Because that's the thing, you do a night out before the lockdown days. Um, then the next day you would say, oh, has anyone got any photos from last night? And then everyone's just kind of sharing across. So the idea was to kind of create time capsules and, and all these things. But at the end of the day, we were exploring this and we were speaking to lots of different agencies. So I had um, some design experience. Um, I was a, at that time I was a business analyst um, and I was also doing um, product owner work for uh, a fintech mobile app so I was getting that kind of experience there and it was um it was really interesting my co-founder he was in the corporate world for 20 plus years he was at Dell HSBC Nokia um and dealing in the the tech techie side of stuff so I'm the creative one I don't deal with it, that kind of element um so yes yeah, so we're sp speaking to lots of different agencies and you know they were really just interested on how much are you willing to pay um, we were just speaking to kind of salespeople who weren't really caring about the idea. Our idea was really raw. Um, so, you know, uh, they just kind of, um, were just kind of giving us numbers and we realized that there's no agencies that could would spend the time to, to understand the idea and then create a clear scope of work, um, basically define what the idea is. So we decided to do it on our own. So I did the design of the app. Uh, my co-founder developed it 
Um, then we did the testing and then we realized, yeah, we have to do another more of these like testing cycles. And then we realized that, you know, there's an opportunity here. here. Um, there's no agency for, you know, uh, for startup founders. So basically I just jumped from, we made the jump, set up Nogna Studio and then um, two and a half years um, later, um, I'm here and we're working with a wide range of startup founders um, who all have unique ideas and, and whatnot. So we spend a lot of time um, focusing at the early stage, really trying to understand what they're wanting to do, uh, what they're trying to achieve. And then we're also trying to bring out the, the cultural balance and also bring in kind of the dynamics to match their levels. So if a startup founder is more technical or more analytical, our approach will be to kind of um, provide more analytical support when we're providing information. Whereas one which is more um, more on the visual side, we talk about more about the idea and what the future could be. So, um, so yeah, so that's kind of our piece. Like our USP is that we um, we try to be the internal team that the startup founder wish they, they could um, afford full time. Um, and that's kind of how we how we treat it. So we treat it more like a partnership and, um, you know, we share their pains and we try to treat their startup as if it was our own startup. So that way um, we can kind of stay honest. Um, I guess the name of the agency is Nogna Studio. Um, how we came up with it, really simple. We threw out all the ideas that we wanted. Uh, we basically made post-it notes on the wall, you know, honesty, transparency, then we grouped them all up. And then essentially the, the single word was naked. And then for SEO work, that's not ideal because um, we don't want people to be searched for naked um, to find us. So this in translations, my co-founder is Norwegian and then Nogna means naked. So we are the essentially the, the naked studio. Um, so that's kind of how we came to the name. Um, so yeah, so that's a bit of background about Nogna studio. Um, I guess Joanna can give me some direction on what kind of aspects you'd like me to talk to talk about in terms of the how we hire and how we try to build our team and, and culture. Um, yeah, we just um, we we get a lot of interest from people as to you know what when you're interviewing when you're looking what kind of roles you're trying to fill if somebody wanted to join as a sort of part of the technical team you know what kind of setup you guys have. When you're kind of mimicking that startup um as well as the sort of you know other roles that, that would support building building that group yeah yeah so we're really we're still um a very small agency um and a key thing that we do is basically we try to take on as many hats as possible um and then when we don't have enough hands to put the hats on our head or we don't have enough heads um we then start we then identify what the gap is. So if it's a product gap, project management gap, sales gap, um, we then kind of uh, create a basically a scope of, you know, what the job spec is going to look like. Um, and then what we do is we just, um, you know, we use the different mediums. Um, so we do a lot of talking. So we speak to a lot of uh, other startups asking what tools and websites they're using to hire people or if they know anyone. So we like to try to do it kind of like the organic way rather than us just going on Google and then just throwing it there. So we try to get referrals, um, try to chat through because people will tend to uh, filter and distill um, perceptions. So if they will suggest someone, they will in their head kind of distill it and kind of do a little bit of filtering to say, yeah, this person could be a fit. Um, so you know, uh, I think we got one through, we got our project manager, um, so Amy, um, she's a, our um, project manager and she was from CodePlan. Um, so her, basically her background was, she was in the, is, um, she was basically an air, she was an air hostess for, I think for six years. So um, she did that. She worked at a restaurant um, dealing with the um, uh, basically the customer relations part. Um, and then she did the code clan course um, to get some technical experience. Um, and then we got 
um, through someone in our team. They knew someone at Code Plan, and then that person suggested Amy. Um, so we were looking at a range of candidates, but um, Amy was quite a good one because she has that hospitality background. She knows what it's like to to deal with um, deal with customers and clients, and you know making sure that they're happy. Um, and that's kind of a big thing um, for us at Nogna is to when we can provide you know you know basically a really nice team vibes um, so that way they can kind of work um, really nicely with our clients. So that's kind of how we we looked at it. So when we are looking at candidates, um, we prefer ones who've got really unique backgrounds. We love quirks. Um, the weirder you are, um, you know, there's lots of there's lots of perks to that. Um, if you are someone who's really a stickler for detail, if you're someone who, you know, for some reason, Fridays is always like they get really energetic on a Friday and they tell us that that's their thing. Um, those are like little bits that's quite nice that we want to bring into the to the company. So like if you're really transparent and honest, um, it allows us to kind of see and how picture how you could be a fit to the to the company because essentially in the startup level so when you're starting out so we're called, we still call ourselves a, a startup because um, you know we're still going through startup chaos um, but essentially our world is there's holes everywhere you're on a boat there's lots of holes and what we're doing is we're just plugging each one as much as we can um, and you know the bigger you are if you're a bigger business you got kind of a little bit less holes to fill because you got enough people you know you're able to just keep adding them so we're kind of looking for someone who's able to be willing to to not just focus on one hole to plug they can you know they can do a couple of more and and whatnot so that's kind of like a, a way that we kind of look at it is someone who's willing to to do a little bit more um because they have that freedom to be more of a to be more intrapreneurial um, they can kind of think on their own and and work away in the hiring process um, we kind of distill it like a it's like i don't know we made i think i made it up i can't remember we started using it call it the train theory um, so when we are you know interviewing candidates we're trying to open them up so we do a lot of icebreakers to really try to imagine what it's like to work with them and basically the whole train theory is that there's two parts so one is the journey there so imagine you're going on a eight hour journey to um to destination b can you imagine yourselves um you know being able to have a good conversation talk about things on that journey there um and then you know if it feels like yeah you would be pretty good and then if you're on the journey back but that person wasn't there um you know, do you think that you'll kind of, um, you know, you would, would you miss them? You know, would you feel like there was de definitely like a gap there? And, you know, there's definitely someone um, who could be really useful. So that's kind of how we do like the, the train theories that kind of lets us visualize what we're, what the experience will be like and if they'll really make an impact. Because um, that's what the train journey back is really is about, you know, do you think they'll make an impact? So if we utilize our skills and, um, you know, and then they, moved on you know would we you know have these kind of uh, big impacts caused by them um so that's kind of the the part that we do for the hiring piece from a because essentially what we're trying to do is just kind of assess you know just in our heads we're you know still early stage but it's like you know a cultural fit so if you're trying to look at a company try to kind of look at the you know, it's the people that make the culture and it's the, the culture that makes the company. So knowing the people that work at that business or startup, um, you know, asking them what it's like to work there, what's kind of like the day to day, you know, what's the, kind of the ethics um, and they'll be able to kind of give you a sense of what that's like. Um, and then when you get to that interviewing stage, um, if you know a little bit about how the company operates and you know the the typical you know day in the life of the startup you have an idea of what the the ethics are like um, in terms of culture as well 
um, you know, you'll have, it'll be much easier for someone like me to say, oh yeah, you'll definitely be, you'll definitely fit in. Um, Cause at the end of the day, it's like, yes, this person come in and they can definitely, you know, wear these extra hats. Um, and I don't have to worry about that hat and taking it back. If you got any more questions, Joanna? I know I did rambling. I'm just trying to, to think and stuff. No, no, it's not, it's nice actually because a lot of these we've we've done in different formats, so conversational kind of works as well. Actually, I mean, I, I guess the the nice thing and probably to to echo a little bit what you said there is when you're looking at the sort of smaller software house, that individual becomes really crucial, and how you fit in the team hiring um, is sort of what I'm hearing, and that you know really being open and honest about yourself in smaller companies really is important for the ongoing success of the role um you know that you just don't have the same number number of people that you have in some of the bigger technology firms so definitely worth everybody being aware of the impact that company size has um you mentioned code base at the beginning i'm not sure if um definitely, sort of, definitely code clan rather sorry well you're, you're both in fact <laughs> with amy but um you know um it it kind of it seems like a nice incubator as well. So, you know, if, if any of you are interested in the kind of starter, smaller companies, um, it's worth having a look at who's in there. I know we had an earlier talk, Andrew, and you, you've also mentioned this around networking and talking to people. Um, you know, you, you just, I think you said you got most of your roles through sort of talking to people and finding out where the, the gaps were in these sort of companies. Are there any groups or forums that would be useful for people to join to sort of, you know, if, if you're not, I know you're in the building, so obviously that you'll meet people sort of in the coffee areas and stuff like that. But if you're not in the building already, what would you recommend people do to kind of get that exposure? Um, really, it's just kind of, um, let's see, I'm, I'm kind of a, I'm a, I'm a kind of a lazy person in the sense that I like to to do things in the moment that were, you know, to get the result in the least amount of effort. So I would, if it was me, I would, um, you know, join uh, any events on Codebase. Um, I would then chat to someone and then ask if they know someone, because um, I would want to know, I want to learn or just chat a little bit more about something. And that person will, you know, um, give me an intro and then that person then could give me the right intro into the direction that I want to go. So that way people are, you're kind of getting people to kind of um, just pass you on. And then you're like, ah, yes, I am at the right place. This is where I wanted to be. Um, um, so it's kind of like that. Might be good um, to talk about how I got into the startup scene. Um, so when I was in uni, I was, I was working on my, um, my startup. Um, it was called Student Sins back in the day. Um, it was basically kind of like a, a planning thing for students to, and also to, you know, cope with the, the uni life. Um, because your first idea is, all, is never your, your last idea. Um, so that one, you know, it got buried one day. Um, but I got all that experience and I didn't want to work for any corporate companies. Um, everyone was applying to them. I tried one graduate scheme application and I spoke to like basically someone who sounded like a robot and um, didn't really enjoy that so I wanted to work for a startup I didn't know how to get into working in startup so what I did is I wanted to work at a startup that was at the seed stage really early um, who was probably too busy to advertise that they need a role um, so what I did is I went on to Crunchbase. I searched for Edinburgh startups. Uh, I got the free trial with Crunchbase. You get it for like three day trial um, so that we can access the full thing. Um, and then I, you just cancel before it actually um, pings it away. But what I did is I looked at the seed stage startups in Edinburgh. There was like, um, I think there was like 20 in there. And then the ones that had funding um, that had uh, over 1 million in funding um, and are still in the stage stage and, you know, are about like three years in or, or more. Um, I then looked at the founder and then basically just um, tried to find the founder details. So 
Uh, some I reached out on on LinkedIn. Some of them I found their their direct emails. Um, but then I managed to send a, a LinkedIn message to one of the the founders um, through LinkedIn, and then um, said I was really interested. Here's my CV. I made like a really uh, different looking CV, so that way I wanted to I wanted to kind of stand out. Um, but yeah, we started the said I'd be interested. Um, I think we did a call, and then I came down from Aberdeen to, to Edinburgh, um, did the interview is more like a chat really. Um, and I was just really just, I was just being really honest and saying, this is what I want to do. I really like the, I want this kind of experience. I want to do this in the future. Um, so I was really, you know, trying to just lay down on the table of like, um, you know, this is what I want to do. This is what I like, um, and things like that. And then, and then the, uh, the CEO, he offered me um, a job um, and the title was just projects. And then um, I got to basically wear lots of hats and then build loads of experience. And then, um, and I was also up front with them. So I told, you know, he knew from the start that I wanted to do my own thing. Um, and I, you know, I put my notice in, you know, I was, I think I did it very honest. I did it in the way that I wish I'd like someone to do it if um, they were putting a notice in. So I put in, I told them that I was going to put in notice without putting my notice as I'm going to do this in two weeks. I just want you to be kind of prepped so you have more time. Um, but yeah, and then I ended up starting Nogna Studio. Um, so that was kind of the scene um, of how I got into the, the startup bit, which was just, it's all about opening the, opening a door. Um, and the hard part is finding which door to, to open. Sometimes it's, you know, the easiest way is just to kind of go on Indeed and, and all that, but you're competing with like thousands, uh, probably more than that. You're competing with like thousands of other applicants who are trying to do the same thing. And all you need to do is stand out and be really honest. Um, Andrew, you mentioned Crunchbase there. What is it? So Crunchbase is like a, is like a startup database. So basically you can go in there and basically it's kind of like a directory that's kind of collates all the information. So if you wanted to learn about Airbnb, um, you could search it up on there um, and it you know, tells you this is the team, this is the investment rounds that they've got in, this is, their, this is the news articles they've been part of. Um, so that one's quite useful. And it's, I think every, every startup gets, gets added there. I don't know how they do it. I think they scrape the internet and then add it to their database, but there's lots of, if you want to find information about a specific startup, it's a good, a good starting point. Brilliant. Excellent. Um, does anybody else have any questions that they want to ask? Nope. <laughs> no, covered everything. Oh. <laughs> Literally, <laughs> something to eat. <laughs> so, uh, cheers for that, Andrew. One, one of the one of the things I'm think I'm looking to actually kind of career shift. So I'm 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 a senior tester. Been there for about ten. Been not doing that for ten years, but uh, I'm looking at to get into a more pro delivery role, scrum master type role, because I feel that that kind of suits my personality. Like it's all about, for me, it's all about helping people build things, getting teams together, quite team orientated. But what one of my biggest issues is getting your fit in the door because everybody said, oh, you must have X amount of experience and Y amount of experience. As a newbie, Bertie Commerce, how, how, do you, how, do you, how would you advise somebody just to try and get themselves in the door? Yeah, so it's quite hard with these because everyone's like your your scenario and your your background is different from mine. So um, I wouldn't be able to advise on how to get to the, the scrum master part. But what if if I was you, um, I would go on LinkedIn. Um, I would look for someone who has your role. Um, so if you're a, like a senior tester, if 
find other senior testers on LinkedIn and then look for ones that have it as a, a previous job role and who is now a scrum master um, and just reach out to them. Uh, what I found on LinkedIn is despite the multiple, um, you know, cold calling messages and recruiters and, you know, all these other agencies that send you like just sales uh, messages, um, you know, you, it's really, you find it, it's quite good to actually just reach out to, to another one because people tend to help out another if they're in the same boat. So um, if you found a Scrum Master or product owner or whatever, um, who's got a senior testing background um, and you reached out into LinkedIn, I'd say that you got like more than a 50% chance of him messaging you back and then you doing it just a call, quick call and he may be able to refer you on to, um, you know, someone, or he may be able to give you good advice on how to get that direction. Cool. Thanks for that. Yeah, I like that idea. That's quite good anyway for any role, just that kind of networking. Um, any other questions? I've got a question. Yeah. Hi, Andrew. Um, my name's Hamid. I'm not exactly from, well, I'm not working in the software kind of role at the moment, but I'm looking for a career change. Um, one, one question I do want to ask is um, that's obviously quite a journey for you to basically be where you are just now. Was it, was it scary? <laughs> because also you, you're not going the normal route through the corporate route, you know, which, uh, you know, I I'll give you a lot of credit for doing that. You've actually gone to do something that was really of your more of your passion um, like how how did you feel you know when you were going through all that were you did you feel a lot of confidence or were there were there points where you felt like um or oh, you weren't sure you know is this going to work out I mean you know I'd like to sort of hear more yeah you know, yeah yeah um yeah when I from uni like everyone like it was a bit um scary when all my friends were doing all their applications since January and then we graduated in Ju July um, and they were getting their their jobs um, I didn't re I was just um, focusing on you know getting through uni getting um, my degree and then I just I, I just made the jump I just um, you know I looked at different options and um, I tried them so I say that I did the emailing and I went through Crunchbase um, and using LinkedIn to reach out, but that wasn't the, the only one that I did. That was the one that, um, there's always two stories. You got the marketing story, which is the one I'm saying to you, um, but you have the real story, which is like actually what really happened. So, um, you know, I was, you know, um, you know, I was speaking to loads of people. I was um, looking at different, you know, groups and things. Um, to basically find entry points to other startups. I was looking for, you know, what places, um, you know, startups could be and then what events there are and trying to see if I could attend those. So really it was just looking at all my different options and then just keep trying. Um, and that's kind of the way that I did it. Um, and what you find is that when you, when one option doesn't work, you become more critical and then you're like, okay, you know, um, maybe I tried this, this way maybe I try it this way and then you just kind of keep going through um I also had time on my hands as well because I think I gave myself like two two months to look for something so that was my window I kind of put like a benchmark saying like I need to find a job in this industry or I would um have to actually you know go through the corporate route um but yeah so just um being really calculated and knowing your personality is also really good so if you look at the, the Myers-Briggs um, stuff, um, like I'm an ENTP, um, but knowing what kind of traits you've got is really useful because um, if you, like for me, I'm more, I like to be really perspective. So I look, like to look at all these different options. Um, so if you have a perspective trait in it, um, you know, if you kind of roll with it and say, yeah, my personality is to explore all the different options, um, this is the route I should take. If you're someone who's more judging, you know, and you have more structure, um, your approach would be different. It wouldn't do my kind of uh, approach, which is basically YOLO. 
We'll all in two months. Yeah. Yeah. No, thanks for that. Any other questions? No? Right. I'm going to stop recording. Thank you, Andrew. Um,